Hello, I'm Robert, and this video is going to be about oxygen. I'm going to show you how to put oxygen on and how to handle the bottle. Oxygen is the only drug that a ski patrollers were allowed to administer. We use oxygen to treat for shock. We use oxygen when there's major trauma. We use oxygen for altitude sickness. This is a D cylinder. The size is a D. Uh, oxygen cylinders always have green on them. Um, there is another, this is the most common size, there is another size which is used on the hill and it is Super D. A D cylinder under normal flow will last for approximately 20 to 25 minutes. A Super D goes twice as long um, and there's a third size that's used in um, the base room and that's the size E and it actually has about the same volume as a Super D. Okay, so to administer oxygen, the first thing is you always want to control the oxygen bottle. You never leave the oxygen bottle sitting like that because it might fall over. So you make a spot in the snow or you put it under between your um, knees. When, when you take the oxygen out, the first step is that you need to crack it and get rid of any dirt that might be stuck in the orifice. So I'll put the top on and briefly open it up. Okay. Second is you take the regulator and the regulator has an O-ring here that will provide the seal. Okay. Um, they can be yellow, they can be black, um, if the o-ring isn't in there it won't seal. Uh, lots of patrollers, including myself, carry a spare o-ring with them. So to put it on you'll notice that there's two pins here. They correspond with two pins on the opening here. You simply put it in until it indexes in. Tighten it up. Set the flow off. Turn it on. You can now see the pressure. A full cylinder will be approximately 2,000 PSI. Below 500 PSI we don't use it anymore. Okay, so this cylinder is ready to go. If I turn the flow up now, you can hear oxygen coming out. So now we need a device to administer it to the patient. For most situations, we use something called a non-rebreather mask. The way the non-rebreather mask works, oxygen comes into this bag and fills a reservoir and then goes up into this face mask area. On one side of the mask there is a valve so when the patient exhales the air goes out when they inhale it closes off. On the other side usually that valve is left off. The reason for that being that um, if the valve is on both sides and the oxygen flow gets cut off, then the patient will suffocate. With a single valve in, this mask will deliver something on the order of 75% oxygen. With two valves in, it will deliver close to 90% oxygen. This is the only mask that is approved for OEC protocol. So I'll set up the mask. With a non-rebreather, you set the flow rate at high flow, which is 15 PSI, or 15 liters per minute, excuse me. The first step is you close off the valve coming out of the, out of the bag, so I'll deflate the bag here, which then inflates the bag. Then you put it over the patient's mouth and nose, getting a firm seal, and put behind. So, in review, we always use 15 liters per minute, which is high flow with this type of mask. And um, you fill the bag first. The bottle will last 20 minutes, so it's a good idea to note when you put it on. Um, sometimes I'll even write the time on the mask so that I know when it has to be changed. Um, if there's two valves on, I have to be especially careful to, to make sure that there's oxygen flow continuously or I'll just remove one so I don't have to worry about the patient suffocating. Um, okay, so this is the common 
treatment with oxygen. There is another another device for administering oxygen. That's a nasal cannula. Now a nasal cannula will increase the oxygen delivered to something on the order of 25% to 30%, which is not much above what you normally get. So um, the protocol or the instances when you would use a nasal cannula primarily deal with a patient who is panicking and you want to calm them down and so you give them this as a means of calming them down. Also maybe for uh, someone who's having some altitude sickness and you just want to give a little bit of supplemental oxygen. But in any sort of trauma or treatment for shock you don't want to use a nasal cannula. So the nasal cannula has two little things here which come out and go into the nose. You want to place these so that they're going to follow the nose down. So if you put them, if you put them like this, they won't work. You have to put them in. So you would put them into the nostrils like such. Annie's nostrils here stick on the nasal cannula. Then you take the um, tubes that come out and you go and you put them over the ears to hold it in place. And you can adjust this piece here up to get a firm thing. Flow rate for a nasal cannula is somewhere between two and six. Six is the optimal rate, so you would set it at six. They're now getting 30% oxygen. Its flow rate is approximately half of what we got, so you would have 40 minutes out of a cylinder. Thank you.